All right, in this video, this is the circular text component, and we can take any text we want and we can wrap it around a circle. This can be dynamic text, and before I actually dive into it and show you how I made it, let me show you how it works. So it's called the circular text component. You can find this in my free components folder, and if I head on over to its globals, we can make some adjustments. First of all, we can change the font. We can use whatever text we want, and whatever text you want, you want to put that inside of this global variable called text. And again, you can put whatever you want to put here. For example, maybe you want to put today's date. So if I check on this, you can see that that wraps perfectly around that circle, and everything stays centered as well. So when this changes dynamically, like a longer day of the week, tomorrow, Wednesday, you're going to see it probably come down here some. And as a matter of fact, let me just come in here and let me advance one day. So let's advance one day. We got Wednesday, and that's going to be uh, May the 29th. So advance one day there. And now notice that it is centered still, and we're rotating more over here to keep everything centered. But for teaching purposes, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put the numbers 1 through 9 and a 0. That's going to be a total of 10 characters. So check it on that. Now we have our rotation. Everything is centered nicely right between the 5 and the 6. That's like the midway point, I guess you could say. But we can make this circle bigger and smaller. And notice the text is moving with it. You can make the text itself bigger. And notice if we do make it bigger, it starts to overlap with the circle. Well, that's no problem. We can come in here and apply some more padding to slide those letters out away from the center of the circle. I'm going to make my text size a little bit smaller again. And what we can also do is come and put a bigger gap between each character. So, you know, extra angle there. And probably what I need to do now is make my circle a little bit smaller. And I'm going to keep that extra angle at 10 for teaching purposes. Take my padding, bump it on down. But that's the things you can do to customize it. Now, obviously, you can go in there and change colors and all that stuff, too. Now, how did I make it? Over in items, we had the circle itself. You can delete that circle if you want. And then we have this overlap group. And then inside of that overlap group, we have a bunch of other overlap groups. And some of them are blank. And the reason why some of these are blank is because my GV text, it doesn't have enough characters to fill in all these overlap groups. And you can quickly add more or remove them. And if you wanted to add more, you just copy and paste. So let me show that to you real quick. I'm going to delete all of them with the exception of one overlap group. Okay, so we have just one overlap group. And again, that sits inside of this overlap group. But the number of overlap groups that we copy and paste, so let me just copy this single one that we have here, and I'm just going to paste it in where I have 10 overlap groups. But again, you want to add more if you're going to be showing like song titles, today's date, and stuff like that. So I've copied and pasted them. Now let's talk about how this works. Each overlap group has a single text item, not a morphing text, just a plain old text. And we have our font applied as well as our text size. And let me show you how to get this number. Now it says a two, okay, it says a two here, but it's actually a one. As you can see there, that's what's getting returned. Well, what we're doing is we're cutting that GV text. So whether you're showing today's date, a song title, or in this case, I'm just showing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a zero. We're going to cut a certain number of characters from our GV text, and we're going to show one character after those characters that we cut. Now, SI module index comma one, let me talk about that with you real quick. If I come back to the overlap group that has all of these other overlap groups inside of it, let's see how we're getting this three to show. Now, the way I type that text in, I typed in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. So for this overlap group that has a three in it, the module index of this overlap group is two because it's the third item. Now, if you look at SI module index, you know the first item has an index of zero, the second one has an index of one, the third one has an index of two, and so forth. So for this third overlap group, if we look at the code for the text, what we are doing is we are cutting that GV text. We're removing the first two characters because the module index of this third overlap group is two. 
So we're removing the first two characters and we're going to show just one character after that. That's what this code means. And by us using the SI module index here, we can copy and paste and quickly add more overlap groups. Now also for this text item, if we go to its position and we have some bottom padding applied here, I'm gonna take that code off. And that three is actually, I guess you could say, in the center of the circle. And if we apply some bottom padding, you can see it going to where it needs to go. Now let's look at the code for that. The code, we are actually using the circle size plus that extra padding. That's all we're doing there. And again, every single one of these overlap groups that you see here had those same codes applied. Now, let's look at this single overlap group that has all of these overlap groups inside of it. If we go to the layer of that single overlap group, we do have an offset applied. Let me take that offset off. And now, with no offset, zero degrees, I guess you could say, it starts here and it goes clockwise. Well, I want it to be somewhere roughly around, I guess, here, give or take. We need to use a code to get it in this position, and depending on how many characters we have in our text, depending on what our angle is, this rotation can definitely change, this offset here. Well, let's look at the code, and we're getting a 315 return to us, so I was pretty close with my eyeballing there. And if we look at the code, we're going to take 360, we're going to subtract the length of our text. We're going to multiply it by the extra angle, and then we're going to divide that by two. This is going to allow us to center things up. But not only that, we want to add on that extra angle divided by two. Now, if I take away the last part of this code here, it's going to be slightly off-centered. So I'm taking away that little last part of the code, and you can see that it looks like it's more situated on the left side than it is the right-hand side. So by us coming back in here and adding that back on, that's gonna center it up perfectly. Now, if you notice back at the beginning, I had extra angle set to 10 degrees. And look at how many characters I have here. I got 10 characters, but if we look at the number of degrees that we have, 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 90 degrees. And if we take 90 degrees and we cut it in half, that's gonna be 45. Well, notice the difference between 360 and this number that we're getting returned to us, 315. The difference between those two numbers is 45. Now, if we were to come in here and add more characters, that will definitely change. But by us putting this offset code on this single overlap group right here that has all of the other overlap groups inside of it, no matter how many characters you have here, it will stay centered. And there you have it, a circular text component. It's not morphing text, but it looks like morphing text. And by us applying the techniques that I've discussed in this video, you can always make the text hug that circle, regardless of how many characters you have. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.